All right, everyone. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about yogic meditation. And I know that I'm a Vedic astrologer, but in yoga philosophy, all these things are intertwined, and you can only make so much progress in your astrological studies if you have no experience with meditation or any familiarity with yoga. Um, what we're doing with astrology is we're looking at the state of the soul and its journey, its sojourns through its many lives. So astrology is based on the philosophy of reincarnation. It is. Even the Western traditions were based on the philosophy of reincarnation. All the ancient occult Western traditions also believed in reincarnation. It wasn't until the time of Christianity that that sort of got forgotten. Um, so it's, it's kind of one thing I like to point out to begin with is that one of the reasons that I love Vedic astrology so much over Western astrology is that the Vedic culture and the Indian, the world of India has a lot more of a solid occult foundation and a lot more people who actually know what they're talking about in spirituality. One of the cool things about Vedic astrology is that it's intertwined with this culture and philosophy of people who were truly enlightened. And there's a long continuing tradition and lineage of people who are enlightened. In the West, it's not like there haven't been people who've gotten enlightened, but there's just, it's just not the land of that. Everyone knows that. The West is the land of material progress. Uh, the East is the land of spiritual progress. In, at least in this age, right? In this yuga. So, when it comes to Western astrology, a lot of that stuff's very lost, and a lot of us don't have good like guides it's, again it's not like there weren't some edgar casey is a very wonderful example of a profound western soul who had a lot of psychic abilities and all but then we're also following still we're following people like helena blavatsky and alistair crowley and people like that who were known fakes and cheaters and liars if you don't know that go and look on look into that on your own um and we need to acknowledge these things and not run from uh not run from it, but we need to acknowledge when a teacher is not true and re reject that teaching in order to attract the real teachings. So in the West, a lot of people are following fake teachers right now. That's just the facts of the matter, and not just in the West, all over the world, actually. In the same way, there's a lot of people just following false teachers. That's actually okay, because we have to merit having a good teacher and we have to first the student must be ready for the teacher to appear so actually when we're not sincere students and we're not really seeking the truth and we're just oh i want to like go to a yoga class just to make my butt look good really and i don't really want to get enlightened then of course i'm going to attract a fake false teacher like yogi bhajan or whatever you know one of these um teachers who ended up being really false and you know real real yogis like us knew that the whole time and just had to keep our mouth shut because we knew something would happen eventually. Um, but basically, there are really tons of really legit gurus, really legit masters out there. But they are all underground. They're not going to come on YouTube really at all. Like, they're going to do their best to stay away from it. So I'm sorry, but Sadhguru, these types of people, no. If you're really serious about spirituality, run from them. Um, run from YouTube gurus as fast as you can. Um, even me too. If you're not resonating with this, go away from it. Reject it. That's your right to do that. Um, but I have done meditation for 12 years. I was initiated into an ancient Kriya Yoga, ancient enlightenment tradition in 2000, uh, 2008. It's uh, almost coming up on 13 years. It's October. I got into this stuff before YouTube was even a thing. Um, I remember trying to type in Yogananda, Kriya Yoga, all these things on YouTube. There was nothing. It came up blank back in 2008, 2009. So I'm just telling you guys, like, I've done this stuff since before. It was cool and popular and really hip. And so I can tell you, like, that's what a, what a guide is supposed to do. I'm not a sat guru. I'm not your, your ultimate guy. But there are different levels of gurus. And there are guides who can just point you in the right direction. And I'm just trying to tell you guys, like, you're not... If you're looking for if you're looking for liberation and you're only looking for it on YouTube, you are barking up the wrong tree. 
And the fact that I have to go on YouTube to tell you this is what makes me so kind of annoyed with it. The fact that people don't even already like know this, but that's just the way that the world has gone. Um, and so occasionally, yes, yeah, some real teachers will go on YouTube and teach, but you'll notice they have the tiny, they don't have very many views or very many subscribers or anything because a real teacher is someone who's going to be making you work on yourself and is not going to be validating your ego and your emotions constantly. And that's what people want. So people will only keep watching those gurus. So you see the gurus who are the most sensational will naturally rise to the top of the YouTube algorithms. But does that mean that they are actually the, the best ones? No. And it actually is the opposite of most times. So some more information on yoga and just the background of it. In ancient times, there were three classic yoga paths. There was the the bhakti yoga path, the path of love and devotion, and then there was the karma yoga path, the path of service, doing good karma, action. Basically, if you know, think about it, karma is the thing that's in your way, well, you just stop creating any bad karma, you know, so that's karma yoga. And then there is um, dhyana yoga, which is the yoga of knowledge and self-inquiry and wisdom. So, Kriya Yoga would kind of fall into the Raja Yoga, this kind of fourth one. Um, Raja Yoga is royal, kingly, Raj like a king, you know, Raja Yoga. Um, Kriya Yoga would fall into that category, but really Kriya Yoga en encompasses all of these. Um, Kriya Yoga, Kriya just means a cleansing rite or a cleansing action you do. So it's a, it refers to a specific pranayama you are taught that cleanses the nadis, it's like taking an internal shower, you might say, um, and it's extremely useful. But at the same time, all these other practices are involved for Kriya Yoga to, to really work. And Kriya Yoga is actually mentioned in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Uh, the second chapter, I believe, is titled Kriya Yoga. Um, and it's important that in the we note that in the Yoga Sutras, in all types of meditation, yoga meditation, the yamas and the niyamas are what are given first, okay? So the yamas are the restraints, and then the niyamas are the don't restrain, or the do's and don'ts, basically, of yoga. So, you know, you can look those up and study those on your own, but those, what I, the point I want to make here is that moral structure and moral development and Strength of character and moral fiber is, is what is needed before you go on past the second stage of, of uh, the eight limbs of yoga. Okay, so before you even get into asana, sitting right. So all these people who go to these classes and do all these postures and work on all that, and that's what they think they're doing yoga. Well, if they haven't practiced the yamas and niyamas, they weren't even qualified to do that yet. You see? So if they were not being harmless, you know, or being vegetarian, part of ahimsa, you know what I mean? Or if they weren't, um, you know what I mean, D just doing all these, all the different do's and don'ts of yoga, basically. Um, these are the things that keep your energy from being leaked out, okay? So basically the reason for this is that, as I was taught by a really advanced yogi at the Center for Spiritual Awareness at this ashram, he could literally, this yogi who taught me this, he could literally like, make his, his hair stand on end on goose, like create goosebumps or whatever, like at will. He could, he was like, feel my head, it just felt normal. And he was like, okay, now feel my head. It felt like a burning oven. Like he could, he could literally move his energy wherever he wanted, like burn me. It was like so hot. Um, and this guy, you walk by him in Walmart and not think anything of him. You think he's just some random country bumpkin or a redneck or something. He's just a normal guy, shirt, jeans. Um, anywho, so, these are the real yogis, the people you're never going to meet, because this is all a secret underground thing. Um, and so this guy taught me, he was like, look, seriously, you have to do that. You have to have those yamas and niyamas first, because otherwise, when you go and do the Kriya Pranayama and do all these other things, your energy is just going to be like leaked out. You know what I mean? Like as soon as you go and get angry or rage someone out, or if you're doing all these other things, you're just depleting your energy. So the yamas and the niyamas just basically keep the prana and the energy from leaving your system. And then you go and do yoga and it, you just keep doing this and eventually you're gonna experience God. Hopefully that makes sense. 
So then, of course, you know, the pranayama, if you're into pranayama, even if you haven't been initiated in Kriya Yoga, don't do this if you are um, menstruating, if you are pregnant, or if you are uh, extremely tired or sleep deprived or ill, or if you're just psychologically ill. These are the times you don't want to ever do pranayama in these cases, okay? It, it, let's say you're pregnant or something and you still want to do something, you can do a lot of other practices and you can also, you know, just be sitting in the silence. You can listen to Om, you can do prayer, bhakti, all kinds of things. Um, but you just, when you're uh, menstruating or pregnant, you don't want to just mess with the the energy the prana is moving down already so you don't want to try to force it to move up it can cause it can cause health problems so kriya yoga is not the path for everyone it's more specific for people who uh, are wanting to take a more quick and more like intense effort based path and and it's for people who are more inclined to meditate um, but really anyone can do it uh, who has a healthy mind body constitution is not totally sick or unwell or anything um although it was said by yogananda did say that um, only people with usually pretty good karma would get attracted to the kriya yoga tradition and as a vague astrologer i found it to be so true like the people who actually come to me and are kriya yogis and get readings oftentimes have some of these good mahapurusha yogas with jupiter or venus or they'll have things like that showing that yoga practice is like a saving grace in their life but even if you don't have that you just start somewhere you know what i mean and you just have to start doing it so don't let that be an excuse to keep you from doing it because remember when the student is ready the teacher will appear so this might be the life for you to generate that karma and then attract one later on in your life even if your chart doesn't show it or in your next birth now kriya yoga was um, said to be lost during the dark ages but it was actually a big thing in the ancient times like the House of Ikshvaku, the you know the royal house of the sun that Rama lived in, and that dynasty all did Kriya Yoga. Krishna makes references to Kriya Yoga um, in the Bhagavad Gita, and again, Patanjali Yoga Sutras refers to Kriya Yoga. There's lots of references to it in ancient times, but it was actually revived. It was actually like lost in the Dark Ages, only to the like the yogis up in the mountaintops and everything. No one else really was was aware of it until the 1800s when. Larry Mashai and you know he was instructed by Mahavatar Babaji and sort of taught it and brought this down so what I'm trying to get at is that if you are into this idea that we are waking up we're in ascending yuga and we're all moving forward spiritually then it kind of fits Kriya Yoga being taught and being introduced this is part of how everyone is supposed to awaken is through learning this stuff um, so Yogananda was born it, in his chart. It was basically promised and predicted that he would be the one to go to the West and teach yoga and he did and The rest is history Now not to be too much of a downer, but after that point Yogis came in boatloads after that realizing how successful Yogananda was and Most of them weren't sincere and weren't as legitimate and as authentic so you get a lot more of these faker gurus and yogis. I mean, we've even had at the at the Center for Spiritual Awareness, the ashram in Georgia, run by Roy Eugene Davis, who was a direct student of Yogananda, was directly taught by him. I mean, they once had to ask like a like a descendant of Lahiri Mashai himself to leave because he was just hitting on girls the whole time. He was just like, oh yeah, I could get used to this whole guru business. And he was just a random dude, but he just thought because his grandfather was Lahiri Mashai that he had that right. And I'm sorry, but that's not okay. It doesn't matter who, who you're father and mother is um, and so Kriya Yoga is a wonderful thing but again not everyone teaching Kriya Yoga is going to be as sincere and uh, you know that's but at the same time people get what they're karmically right to get each one to their own merits as they say um, and so the cool thing about like if you go into Vedic philosophy like, really far back, like I'm in the nakshatras, nakshatras are like the oldest part of Vedic culture, like the Rig Veda. If you go back to that, I mean, the very first word, in the very first verse, the very first sutra, the very first Veda, and on and on, is just Agni, you know, fire, light. So all of the Vedic philosophy is is a, is a worship of the fire and the light of God, and 
pranayama, Kriya pranayama is essentially the universal yogic fire ritual, the fire rite. You hear about uh, yag, you know, um, you hear about yagyas and all these kind of like uh, fire sacrifices and, and rituals and things in the Vedas and all this. Those are, those are the external actions, but the internal process is the yogic process. It's Kriya Yoga. And so, like all of Vedic philosophy is like essentially recognizing this kind of transcendent spirit and this fire, and it's fire that cleanses the most. And Kriya Yoga is a cleansing action. So again, you're, 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 you know, you're basically like revving up the fire within your body. You know how fire is fed by air and prana. So these pranayamas these feed the fire in your body, and this is this basically. As Yogananda said, Kriya Yoga turns the breath into mind, into consciousness itself. Yeah, so Kriya Pranayama is the real fire worship of the Vedas and everything. And uh, we're actually really blessed to be in a time when we can learn about this. So I really advocate, you know, in terms of all remedial measures and all this stuff, Kriya Yoga and yoga process, processes in general, yogic meditation in general, any kind you can do, even if it's not that, do it. That is the best remedial measure that I can advise. Oh, and one more point. Uh, one cool thing about Kriya Yoga is that you don't have to be any kind of religion. You can have any religious affiliation and still do Kriya Yoga. Of course, you know, a lot of people who are new and are going to naturally relate to the Hindu philosophy, but it needs to be stated that Lari Mishai was also teaching Christians this. He was teaching Muslims Kriya Pranayama. He was teaching Buddhists, Sufis, all kinds of people this technique. And that's the way that it should be. The real spiritual masters are far beyond uh, like religious like sectarianism and dogmas and creeds and stuff like that. They're way beyond that. Um, and that's actually another really good way to tell if a teacher is authentic, is if he is has that universal love or if he's still hung up on like his little system being the best, you know, and his his nation and or you know if he's in India he might have all this nationalistic pride that's a red flag right there but anyways um yeah so like the yoga sutras say uh kriya, kriya, kriya yoga consists of um austerity the word is tapa or like heat self-discipline so it's about like creating heat through practice um and effort and austerity and disciplining your your ego and yourself and then it's uh comprised of a uh, like the word svadhyaya, or I forget how you pronounce that word, but it basically means like self-study, spa self, study of the self. Um, that can include studying Jyotish, studying, just just being, using your intelligence to awaken, right? Um, and then the uh, that also in, implies self-inquiry, inquiring into yourself, studying basically how to be the most functional human being, you know, how to live skillfully in the world. A lot of people just don't live skillfully, right? But when you start doing Kriya Pranayama, you just wake up and you're just intelligent, oh, I need to do this this way. You just start living more efficiently in all areas. Um, and then the last, so yeah, he says austerity, study, and then surrender to God, or the word Ishvara Pranidana, Pranidana, I forget how you say that word. Um, but basically it's like um, the just surrendering to Ishvara, surrendering in God, you know, going into God, just absorb, just letting yourself go into the sea of God. Everything is God. You're already in a sea of the omnipresent God. Just let it happen. Just surrender to it. And alongside of all this, it emphasizes, yeah, the set of ascending pranayama. So there's not just one Kriya pranayama you're taught. Initially, there's just one. But then you get taught an ascending set of different breathing exercises as you're developing. And this is where a guru comes in. So you do need to have a teacher or a guide or guru to some degree. You know, again, it's not like you need to be obsessed with just, oh, I can't progress until I have them. But yeah, uh, when you get initiated into Kriya Yoga, you have to get initiated by, a, by another teacher to keep this lineage going, and you need another guru and someone who you can check in with. Um, because if not, you can fall from your state. Uh, and that's very real. Uh, yoga Brashta is a term for that, when a yogi has fallen from his high state of, of 
of experience. Um, we don't need to get into all that right now, but basically just you want to have a teacher um, so that you don't get stuck. But then when you're not stuck, you just keep going. But then when you're stuck, you can go to that teacher. Um, so yeah, that all sounds great, you know, like why aren't more people doing it? And that's the reason for that is because most people don't really want to wake up. I mean, most people are really like entertained by the, the, the drama of life, myself included. Um, and so as soon as we're all ready to kind of get off the wheel of samsara, this is here. And when we are really ready, the teacher shows up. So, um, yeah, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear.